Hey everybody, it's Carson. Today I wanted to bless you with my Spellblade Flame Reef Firebrand Build Guide. So a while back, while playing on my Sark, I did find a 4 LP Sun Reef, and I took it as a sign. A sign that I had to use that ring and play Flame Reef, of course. And after the failed Firebrand Event Horizon attempt, we swiftly pivoted to this build, and Flame Reef is actually a phenomenal leveling skill. If there's one thing I want to highlight with this build guide, is that Flame Reef is an excellent leveling option. The coverage is great. It says it's a melee skill, but with the right setup, as you can see, we clear pretty much the entire screen with one activation of Flame Reef. So I was able to level extremely efficiently with this build. I recall that leveling from 99 to 100 took about an hour and 40 minutes. Granted, we did have the perfect beacon setup with two Enrage modifiers and everything like that, but still, the clear speed for a level 99 character was very solid. But as you can see from the Aberroth fight here, single target is not this build's forte. It takes more than two and a half minutes just to kill Aberroth. Taking down monolith bosses, taking down shades, all of those fights were a struggle. And when it comes to survivability, the build is also not top tier. It's definitely somewhere around the B tier, maybe A tier range. And that is despite getting a 1 LP red ring with plus 16 int. So overall, the clear on the build is great, but the damage, and especially single target damage, is on the weak side, and the survivability is mediocre as well. I think the build clears 500 to 700 corruption comfortably. You could probably push it to 1000 if you min-max even further, but you will be dying every now and then. But despite all of those weaknesses, the build is really fun and it's one of the best ways to get to level 100 as a Spellblade. So definitely consider giving it a try. See if you like the playstyle from this build guide and from the monolith players that you'll see later on. And now let's jump in. Irashemase! All right, let's go over the skill setup, starting with the main source of damage as usual, and that is Flame Reeve, of course. I would say you have two different options on how to spec Flame Reef. One of them is pretty wild, and it's a completely different playstyle, and I'll go over that second. But first, the primary way that I would say is to take advantage of Rhythm of Fire. And that is when you get 12 stacks of this Rhythm of Fire, your next Flame Reef does 2.3x the damage and has 2.3x the range. That's how we get a Flame Reef that covers the entire screen, and does stupid amounts of damage. And the way we trigger these rhythms of fire is by using Firebrand. So each hit of Firebrand gives us three stacks. We need 12 stacks in total. So we need four hits of Firebrand for every single flame reviews. Dancing Flames is a prerequisite and it makes mana management a little bit better. Uh, and then after that, we just go for more damage multipliers. 30% here. We have another 60% versus Ignited here. Make sure you have a source of Ignite. Another 12% more with a little bit of extra flat based on spell damage. I don't think I'm running any spell damage currently. So this is just to hit the prerequisite for Ember Infusion with 48% more multi. And then Flame Caller. It makes Flame Reef return to you. When it does return to you, it deals extra damage. So it's essentially another more multiplier. It's solid. It doesn't increase it mana cost or anything like that. So I definitely spec into this. Alternatives, if you had extra points, you can see I have 22 right now. Uh, I would recommend running an Omnis for plus one, but also in my chest piece, I have another plus one. Ideally, I would actually run plus four Flame Reef in the chest piece. And with that, I'd probably get Frenzied Flame for uh, an additional source of Frenzy and more flat damage, or maybe Norse Crist. This is a decent option as well. If you're running two swords, that's 10 flat per point. Very solid investment here. So if you had a plus three, you can definitely consider just putting one, two, three, maybe even moving one point of heat wave to Norcrest. I would have to do the math on which one is better. So that's one setup for Flame Reef that you can go. That's what I'm currently running. This is probably the most reliable way. Another interesting way to go is to go for World Fire. That gives you plus 10 mana cost. The default, I think, is 26. And so this brings it to 36. And then if you have a Sun Wreath that gives you another plus whatever mana cost, if you manage to get your Flame Reef to 40 mana cost, you can actually consider going for Lost Knowledge because it says 
on a skill, not on a spell, but a skill that costs at least 40 mana. That includes melee skills as well, non-spells. However, that would pretty much mean that you have to run Mana Strike. Without Mana Strike, you cannot sustain your mana, so you have to substitute Firebrand for Mana Strike. That is the only way to make Flame Reef with World Fire and over 40 mana cost work. You also have to drop all of these skill nodes because you cannot afford to reduce the mana cost below 40. So it's a pretty tricky but interesting setup. Imperial in my chat kept talking about it and was running it. And I think it's a really cool setup, so I wanted to highlight it. Shout out Imperial. If you want to try that out, it's viable. I do think the DPS is probably lower. However, the survivability is probably higher. That would be my guess as to what ends up happening when you switch to that setup. Now, when it comes to Firebrand, the next skill here, I have a plus four in it in the chest piece. Honestly, I don't think you need it. I was trying to get more DPS out of Firebrand than usual. So you can see we have a number 110k. And it would be even higher once we get six stacks. However, we just keep using up the stacks of Firebrand. So it's not really worth it. It doesn't synergize very well because we don't really want to stay on high numbers of stacks. So scaling the DPS of Firebrand is anti-synergetic with the setup that we're going for. So you could easily drop a lot of these extra damage nodes and probably just go for survivability. In fact, I do have maybe some regrets of not testing that out. With all of these extra skill points, you can definitely get quite a bit of survivability, you know, even from this insulation, extra armor, extra fire rest per stack. But otherwise for Firebrand, all we care about is getting to max stacks, getting incineration so that at six stacks, we get a 1.72 times multiplier for our flame reef. And we essentially stack many different sources of more damage multipliers for a single large flame reef hit. The way that we have Firebrand set up, we require six hits to take advantage of this to the maximum effect. That kind of synergizes well with versatility. We also have another synergy with the passives where you can get even higher more damage multiplier for a single attack. And in this case, I've invested nine points into this passive node. It's probably a bit of an overkill. I would recommend sticking to around six points so that it lines up nicely with the Firebrand explosion incineration here. That's kind of the Spellblade playstyle that you can imagine. You just power up one big hit. Then we have a mobility skill in Flame Rush, and we get a few different things out of it. We get Frenzy Duration. We also get some DR from Runic Eclipse, which persists after Flame Rush. Due to our high movement speed, Flame Rush also moves faster as we're traversing with it. Extra range. And this is actually quite nice. Getting Fire Rest Shred stacks is one of the reasons I went for Flame Rush, because it synergizes with our other skills. We also have Enchant Weapon with a fairly basic setup. Duration maxed out. We get it automated because we're lazy. We get the mana cost removed. And then we get melee attack speed maxed out. Flat fire maxed out. Cleanse. And uh, we had an extra point that we didn't know what to do with. So we ended up putting it in the Ignite Chance. Because we do benefit 60% uh, more multi here by having a source of Ignite. For Flame Ward, similarly straightforward. We get as much damage as possible by maxing out infusion and getting four points in through flames. Also a source of haste doesn't hurt. Nothing too surprising here. And now before we go into the itemization, I'm actually gonna go into the passive skills first because the passives heavily dictate what kind of itemization we go for. So here you can see we're going for int, two points in elementalist, attack speed in mage flurry, as well as a little bit of crit chance and crit damage. We pretty much max anything that gives us int in all of these skill trees is as much as we can. Arcane Warden maxed out, and int from incinerating aura maxed out. Here, attack speed and ward gain. These two defensive nodes are nice. And then Defender of Wellrun. This is a new addition or a changed up passive here on the Spellblade passive tree. And at five points, it gives us increased crit chance per dex. And that combos ridiculously well with Prodigy, which gives us flat crit per 15 int. So if you just stack int and dex, you get your crit maxed out for free, basically. So that is what the itemization revolves around. Getting as much int and dex as possible to take advantage of these two passive nodes. Then we have Prismatic Blade, which gives us dex and flat melee. Dex giving us crit chance makes this a bit of a no-brainer for me. On the Rune Master side, we just go for survivability. We didn't have enough points to get more int, and we're not really spellcasters, so the secondary effect would not have given us anything. On the Sorg side, 
This is just a free 8 int. We also have mana shell. I think it's worth it just for 5 points, given that we have 300 mana. These 5 points translate to 20 mana and 40 ward per second. I think given our survivability issues, it's decent. You can always switch this to additional int somewhere else if you want, like this one, for example. So given that passive tree setup, now you'll understand why we go for Bone Climber Burbute. It gives us tier seven and tier five decks is actually the dream. We actually nailed this one in Sixer. And the, the helmet already has int and decks, plus nine up to plus 13. So obviously this is best in slot. It also allows us to get even more ward per second per 3% uncapped necrotic res. Then we run an Omnis for the res for the all skills. And if you happen to have something in there in the prefixes, even better. For rings, I'm running a Sunwreath. As I mentioned, that 4 LP Sunwreath. Tier 7 and tier 5 decks with some res in the suffixes. And if you happen to have just 3 LP instead of 4 LP, that's fine. You don't really need the fire res. You can see I'm overcapped. It gives us a little bit of benefit for the flame rush node right here, but overall not needed. The 14 flat melee fire damage is also super nice for Sunwreath, I have to admit. Then we run a red ring of Atlaria. If you haven't seen my recent video on how we dropped six red rings from a single Jora kill, go and check it out. We also got the slam right after the kill, so it was a good time. I appreciate the generosity of Jora, and here's the red ring that we're running. Obviously this is best in slot, but you don't need necessarily a red ring. If you don't have a red ring, just run something else that gives you res and int and dex. It's pretty straightforward for rings. For boots, another very straightforward setup here. Blood of the Exile is best in slot. It gives us dex and int by default. And then if you slam tier seven MS and tier five int or even tier five dex would be fine. This is just a, a no brainer again. For relic, I'd recommend tier seven int and either a tier five dex or maybe tier five crit multi. We don't need tier five mana necessarily here. We would not hit the 300 mana threshold if we didn't have it though. So it does help in some aspects. For belt, I would recommend tier seven hybrid armor. We have to find sources of bonus damage taken from critical strike reduction. CDR is phenomenal for the build because it gives us greater uptime on enchant weapon and even smoother clear with flame rush cooldown reduction and survivability for flame ward CDR. So I will always prioritize suffixes, almost always on belts. Don't worry about the prefixes. You can see I'm running lightning damage and some nonsense in there. Just try to get cleanse. That's all you need in a belt is tier seven hybrid armor, tier five CDR and tier one cleanse. Prioritize it in a Praetorium belt because it's even more defensive. And then if you happen to have the right Praetorium belt, you can consider getting tier five fire damage as well. For chest piece, I would probably prefer to have tier seven flame reef here instead of firebrand and tier five int, obviously. The tier five hybrid armor is great. And then instead of dodge rating, I would probably opt for some tier five armor or tier five percent armor, something like that. The implicits on Arcane Regalia are okay for the build. 14% max mana is decent. It allows us to hit that 300 threshold, even though if you're not running certain idols, you don't care about that threshold as much. But there are other implicit options for mage chest piece as well. If you happen to have an insane tier seven mana unstable core, that's a good option probably. A well slammed no portent unique chest is also a good option. So this is not necessarily best in slot. However, let's talk about this particular best in slot that I don't even know why nobody's running this. I noticed a 3 OP Falcon Fist in my chest. And as soon as I read 27% melee attack speed and 18, and let's call it max 27 melee fire damage for you, I thought to myself, well, why am I not using this? This is insane. The sheer stats that you get out of this. Let's just say that 27% increased melee attack speed is tier seven melee attack speed. Incredible value already. And then you cannot even get melee fire flat in a glove. 27 flat melee fire is about tier five in a weapon for flat fire damage. And then there's also the fact that the effective level for legendary potential is 27. So you can definitely get three OP with the, for these Falcon Fists. If you spam enough unique gloves from prophecies, this is a very obtainable item. And we somehow got lucky and we slammed the three affixes that we want at tier seven and tier five decks with hybrid armor. So if you're not running Falcon Fists, 
on all of your melee fire damage setups, go ahead and farm some unique glove prophecies. It's worth it. In terms of your weapon prefixes, you want a combination of crit multi, attack speed, and flat fire damage. Those are the best three prefixes that you can aim for. For one of these weapons, I was doing the math on what is best between these three choices, and the result was tier seven flat was the optimal choice. However, tier seven melee attack speed, there's something to consider in that it also gives you survivability. Hitting more gives you more ward. So even though it's a little bit behind on the damage side, the survivability benefits might, might make it more worthwhile than just the flat fire damage. But in terms of what is optimal for your setup at any point in time, whether it's crit multi or attack speed or flat fire damage, it would depend on everything else in your build at that point in time. In a lot of cases, flat fire damage is going to be best, but if you want survivability and you want to prioritize that, melee attack speed might be better. And crit multi is a solid choice all around as well. So if you happen to have a good tier seven crit multi sword, you can definitely run it. In terms of suffixes, armor shred is always best in slot for tier five suffix. Frailty is decent, as you can see, I have it. Uh, stun chance is very nice as well. Stun chance can be a form of survivability. There are some good unique sword options like this rainbow edge right here. 74% crit multi, which is essentially tier seven, 48 flat damage. Shocking Knight and Shield is great as well. The build has more damage multipliers conditional on Ignite. Shock gives you stun chance. Chill reduces the damage of enemies. If you happen to have a 3 OP Rainbow Edge, definitely take advantage of it. See if you can get the right slam. I did not have the right sword to slam into this Rainbow Edge. So I'm actually just keeping it in my stash until a better day. If you happen to have a 2 or 3 LP Eye of Reen or Now's Tooth, those are probably viable for best in slot weapons as well. But that's very much conditional on how lucky you've gotten with unique swords. Now in terms of idols, Throne of Ambition is great. And otherwise I wasn't too sure what to do with my idols. You don't have phenomenal choices. 8% armor and mana is just solid all around. And you can see we're running melee elemental damage with preferably 12% increased armor and 12% increased mana. But otherwise just fill up your resistances as much as you can. In terms of blessings, crit multi, and then I opted for ward per second here. However, there are some other decent choices. I think mana is fine. Stun chance is fine. So some of this might be preference. All res and then armor, armor is what I opted for, just defensive blessings at the end here. The skilled rotation is pretty straightforward. You try to hit with fire band about six to nine times and then you activate Flame Reeve. You can choose to pop Flame Ward right before Flame Reeve, just as a burst of damage, or you can activate Flame Ward whenever it is off cooldown for more survivability during models. Just whatever you feel best. So it's a very smooth playstyle, and Enchant Weapon is on auto activate, so we don't need to worry about much. But yeah, this is what the playstyle looks like. And obviously with Flame Rush as needed, it does apply fire rest right so we don't need to worry about that and uh otherwise yeah this is it and now let's wrap up the video with a showcase of corruption 676 clear so you can see the build in action and i'm gonna highlight the build is a little bit squishy even at corruption 6 700 we ran into survivability issues but it's still a really solid favor farming setup for spellblade if you set up shop around 5 600 corruption and get your two enrages and your beacons set up I was getting around 200,000 favor per hour. And that is very respectable. Obviously it doesn't live up to the standards of a Sork, but does anything really? So overall, I'm very happy with the changes that they've made to Spellblade this season. Giving it a really easy way to hit max crit is a massive boost. I do wish EHG would get away from trivializing the itemization and your overall decision-making in the game and just funneling you into attribute stacking don't think that's great game design. It just makes certain things a little bit too simplified, but that's a separate issue. Overall, I like the fact that Spellblade is stronger. And I also like the fact that we have more option for flat crit maxing. And now let's talk about what's next. I'm obviously gonna be pivoting on Spellblade and I will likely pivot to Surge. But before we get there, I have a really special project in mind. We started working on it on our last stream and I'm not gonna give any spoilers on the YouTube side, I'm going to keep it exciting. I'm just going to say it's going to be a super high value tool 
that pretty much everybody in the game is going to end up needing to use, whether beginner or expert, and even full-time Last Epoch streamers are going to get a lot of value out of this tool. I certainly will. I've already used it to learn a bunch about the game, but we still haven't finished building it out. So the next few streams, we're going to be cleaning it up and polishing it. So we're going to have a few streams that are very heavy on Excel and Google Sheets, and we won't be playing the game very much, but it's going to be worth it in the end. I guarantee you. So if you can't help your curiosity, come by on Twitch and check it out. Otherwise, I expect for us to wrap it up in the following week or so, and I'll share what the final product looks like. And who knows, maybe I'll share with you an intermediate version of the tool. We'll see. And if you made it this far, thank you so much. Much love. Take it easy. And go chiso samadeshta.